our next speaker. Uh, I found a couple years ago on uh, YouTube, and I subscribed right away. I was very impressed with uh, how he deals with science and a lot of the myths that people have about science. Uh, it was kind of a little bit difficult to get here. Uh, he's from Dallas, Texas. They got to put a snow yesterday. So his flight was canceled. We got him a second flight, which stopped in Atlanta. And guess who got snow next? <laughs> so at uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning, we finally uh, picked Aaron up. Uh, got him into bed, and uh, he was kind of pressed for time this morning. <laughs> All right. So a lot of you uh, in the audience already know who Aaron Rott is. Uh, so I'm going to hand the mic over to him and hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me come down. It's an honor to be invited. I've never been to Florida. I'm happy to be here. It looks nice. Who would have thought Florida would be pretty? <laughs> uh, Dallas normally is, too. But you have plants here I've never seen. It's great to get out, especially when you've got a foot of snow at home. And that told, told me as soon as I got here that you know, this is what winter is like here in Florida. But, well, spring, you know, spring comes early. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, to adequately uh, introduce myself, one of the first things I feel like to tell you is that I spend way too much of my time debating evolution versus creationism. I, uh, I'm embarrassed to admit how much of my life I've dedicated to this particular venture, especially over the last decade or so. Uh, almost since I discovered the Internet, I happened across this debate, and I've been inextricably involved with it ever since. And uh, before Y2K, I used to work for an Internet service provider that offered unlimited overtime and a uh, unbridled browsing on a high-speed connection for 70 to 100 hours a week. And I investigated everything. Uh, it was I was suddenly on a learning curve. I discovered Google, everything I ever wanted to know I could find. As I said, I happened into this debate, and uh, while I already knew that evolution was at least mostly true, I still thought there might be some truth behind the religious aspect also, and of course, if there is, then I wanted to find out about that. So for the most expert arguments available, I went to the resources where I thought I would find PhDs on either side, where I can, I can get the most expert opinions, where they can hear each other, what they're saying to me, and back up each other's story, or refute what the other has to say. And that's where I ended up on a group called Talk.Origins. And um, I investigated all the claims that were made. I researched everything as well as I could. And then I started investigating other avenues. And uh, in the course of that time, I read a few holy books. I read a lot of uh, archaic literature. I read myriad articles on um, paleontology, and, uh, on evolution in general, and paleontology specifically. And um, although uh, my primary interest was in uh, phylogenetic statistic taxonomy, which I've always considered since I was a little boy to be the strongest evidence of evolution. Um, eventually, I had an epiphany. On the advice of co-workers and friends, I visited a community college initially to inquire about Microsoft certifications and that sort of thing. But being unfamiliar with that campus, the first building I walked into happened to be the science building. And I just happened to find myself standing in front of a wall display full of fossils that I was very familiar with, every one. And I wondered, why do I know the names and background information for all these things? Well, I've been interested in this all my life, and I'm not doing anything with it, or I will never be able to use it. For a layman, everything I knew about science was useless trivia. So I dropped the idea of getting an MCSC. And even though I was a high school dropout, now middle-aged, I, uh, I went back to school in pursuit of a geoscience degree. Which, by the way, that's a lot harder to do if you have a family. <laughs> If you don't yet, <laughs> don't wait. Uh, there's, there's nothing to wait for, even if it's already happened, regardless of your age. I would encourage everybody to go for, for a, a college degree that means something. Um, it was also at about that time that I saw one of those, uh, I saw a news story about one of those creationist museums. Uh, sadly, there's more than one out there, and I don't remember which one this one was, but it was one of the first. And they had a display 
uh, images of what the world would be like if evolution was true. Uh, images like birth defects, disease, starvation, animals killing each other, political subjugation, and atrocious violations of human rights. Photographs just like these, but the ones that were chosen by the uh, Creationist Museum were decidedly more shocking. The people that were running that museum wanted to create the illusion that if we believe in evolution, that our world would really be like this, that these images would be real. The irony is, of course, that these images, just like the ones that they had chosen, were real. They weren't photoshopped, they were photojournalism, showing how the world really is in certain places at certain times. Might I conclude that, that evolution must be real too, if in fact these images are also real, or conversely, if evolution was not true, if the only theory we ever had for biodiversity was a complete fantasy, a collection of frauds and falsehoods as they always asserted, and everything really was divinely designed according to some heavenly plan, the way the creationists advertised that it was, then why are these images real? And what does that say about the version of reality? Um, remember that not all creationists are, remember that not all creationists are Christians, and not all Christians are creationists. Most, in fact, are not globally speaking. Um, Dr. Kenneth Miller, for example, is an evolutionary biologist and a traditional Catholic in a stirring performance that I will not be able to duplicate here. He, uh, he said that in the broadest sense, he believes in an intelligent designer. But he testified against intelligent design against Miller Walsh versus Dover trial because intelligent design was just another brand of creationism. Creationism is not simply the belief that God designed or created the universe. There are many evolutionists who believe that he did. Um, so the word evolutionist obviously doesn't mean atheist either. We could define it as someone who generally accepts adequately supported implications of science, uh, meaning not only that we accept evolution, but also abiogenesis, big bang cosmology, plate tectonics, atomic chemistry, and anything else creation is still compelled to deny. It applies to anyone who thinks that uh, positive claims should require positive evidence and that there, there be a means to distinguish uh, statements of fact from the delusions of illusion and that we have a way of testing the testimonies that we hear to find out how accurate they are and to find and correct any flaws in our current perception to improve our understanding, which is the purpose of science and the reason that we support core principles like methodological naturalism. Now, also known as the scientific method, of course. Defining evolutionism this way, uh, I have to also define creationism since I left it ambiguous. It can be defined as a dogmatic subset of religious believers who may object to everything science is or does, both in principle and practice. Um, in favor of an admitted bias toward a predetermined conclusion unsupported by evidence, but which must be defended against an unwavering obstinance. And uh, should anyone feel uh, offended by my generalization, let me clarify. If you believe in God, and you believe that God created the universe, that he designed all life, but that he designed and employed natural laws and causes to that end, then you are not a creationist. Because a creationist rejects evolution by definition. Uh, because what they really object to is naturalism. They quite literally support the idea that everything happened by magic instead. They don't usually call it magic. They will usually call it a supernatural miracle from a supernatural source. But it means the same thing. 